Good morning, everyone. Thanks for clicking on, tuning in. Uh, this is the KST Halacha Review, post Shachris for Monday, June 1st. Uh, way back before Pesach, before Purim even, uh, we were reviewing uh, contemporary halachas dealing with uh, current issues uh, out of a sefer called Halachically Speaking. Uh, we've uh, periodically looked at this sefer uh, over the last uh, recent, uh, recent couple of years uh, to deal with uh, very uh, contemporary, up-to-the-moment uh, issues uh, in uh, uh, public affairs and in health uh, and in uh, modern travel across the date lines uh, with uh, planes and so on. This is a sefer compiled by Rabbi Moshe David Lebowitz. It's called, subtitled Hard to Find Halacha for Everyday Living, and he deals with uh, a lot of, uh, lot of uh, current questions. He's still uh, producing a weekly newsletter called uh, Halachically Speaking, which you can get online, I believe. I've been reading it uh, for years. Very interesting uh, insights and uh, bringing halacha to bear on current issues. So where we left off uh, was uh, the chapter called Mechitza, Why, How, and When. So we'll take a look at that, do a little bit every day, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, review some things, maybe some, learn some new uh, insights into this important issue. So he writes uh, like this, a Mechitza is more than just a partition. It symbolizes our yearning uh, to make sure that we can connect through our davening, our tefillahs, to connect to Hashem without, with a minimum of, d- of distraction. For most Orthodox Jews, the days when there was a battle over the Mechitza are long gone. Today, most people in the traditional world insist that there is a Mechitza in the Shul. And he references in a footnote a safer, very thick safer called The Sanctity of the Synagogue, uh, which was produced in 1959. Uh, back in those days, there was a lot of controversy, particularly in America, about uh, shuls wanting to modernize. So they had been uh, Orthodox shuls for a long time, and they saw the, or they felt that the uh, uh, tide of public opinion was going toward in the modern direction, in the liberal direction, in other words, uh, taking down the mechitza uh, and so forth. So there were plenty of lawsuits, uh, there were a number of court cases, uh, and the, I don't know if it was the author of the Sefer or just, uh, he just put it together, Rabbi Litvin, uh, sought out the uh, opinions of uh, learned Rashi Yeshiva scholars, poskim at the time, uh, about the issues. Very interesting and informative uh, Sefer to take a look at. I think we have a copy in the Shul Library. Uh, so uh, what does he say? So he says, Kavana is vital for davening. We have to have a proper intention as best we can uh, when we're preparing ourselves for davening, so we try to minimize distractions. Without a mechitza, a place reserved for tefillah, in other words, a place dedicated for davening, uh, a shul, a base knesses, uh, becomes a, uh, or is at risk of becoming a place for a social gathering. Now this is uh, informative uh, and interesting, and it actually uh, jives with what I heard from a historian of American Judaism some years ago. We we're talking about a course she was teaching on uh, on uh, American Judaism, and uh, didn't mention this particular pro- this point, but this seems to uh, this seems to go together with that. So Rabbi uh, Levowitz writes: Mixed seating was first introduced in America by Isaac Mayer Wise in approximately the year 1895, when he borrowed a Baptist church for reform services in Albany, New York. He found the mixed seating of the church so much to his liking that he decided to institute it in his temple. We will discuss the reasons for a mechitza and when it is required and not required. Uh, I took a class once at the Hartman Institute uh, with David Ellenson, who was the president of HUC for a number of years, uh, and then the interim president again. So we were talking about the Hamburg Temple. The temple in uh, Hamburg uh, in 1819 was is uh, popularly known as the first reform temple. So he said that uh, we went into detail about the liturgical changes and so on, uh, and changes in practice with uh, the rabbi speaking in German rather than speaking in Yiddish, uh, facing the kehillah rather than uh, turned in the same direction, so on. Number of institutions there. I think it was the first place to have an organ. Uh, but he said they never had mixed seating in the Hamburg Temple, or at least they didn't uh, for the first uh, uh, decades uh, of that of that of that uh, era in their history. He said he said, uh, and uh, one of his colleagues who was teaching history, as I said, uh, also said that uh, mixed seating is an entirely American uh, phenomenon. Um, and I remember, I think, I'm not sure if anybody has uh, toured the great uh, basilicas and cathedrals of uh, Europe, not that I'm recommending you should, but if you happen to have, uh, then if you recall asking about uh, when you see that there's places uh, for separate seating, for separate uh, places for men and women, uh, that uh, that was something that they uh, uh, maintained because they understood that had been the practice in the temple, which in fact that it was. Uh, so tomorrow, Mir Tzashem, we'll talk about uh, the sources, and mainly in the Gemara and Sukkah, that speak about uh, the origin for separate seating. Have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow.